Hey, what's up guys? Memo CNS Drywall. In today's video, we're going to be going over the pros and cons of the Mircoleros versus the Festo Planix 2.0. This is the one that comes with the light, just got released to the general public, all of us non-influencers, about a week ago. Well, at least we're here. Here in Hawaii, we've had it for about a week. I've used it on three different jobs already, so I feel like I can give an honest opinion um, as to what I like about both of them. And whether or not it's worth the extra, I think it was an extra 200 bucks compared to the Laros. But we're going to be running it off of the vacuum that I've used in all my other videos, the Dewalt HEPA self-cleaning vac. We've used this for about six years, running strong. And we got this hose adapter off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. But it comes with these attachments that are perfect. So all you gotta do is unclip and it can go into here so you could switch over to multiple sanders if you have like us uh, for different occasions. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and hit that subscription button, notification bell, or even share this video if it helped you or if you think uh, someone might benefit from it. But uh, yeah, so full disclosure, these tools were bought in, none of, none of, nothing was free. Um, we're gonna be as honest as possible we have no ties to either company. So um, the main reason I'm shooting this is because we get messages all the time asking uh, our opinion or what we think is better. So I'm gonna give you guys my honest infield opinion. I'm not gonna go too in debt with any specs or anything. I'm just gonna give you uh, my take on infield, how it works, how it feels, uh, if you're using it day in and day out. Uh, but yeah, okay, enjoy, aloha. First and foremost, the cases that it comes with. The Festo comes with a nice protective hard shell case. You can put your business card there on both sides. And it's uh, fairly good, Comes, I, I like it. It's not too heavy. Nice, light, durable plastic. And the uh, breaks down, has all these icons, different type of sandpaper. Uh, so that's pretty much what it looks like when it's broken down. And this is what the Mercoleros comes with. It's just a padded travel case, uh, not nearly as rugged. Let me show you. Yeah, this one's starting to get rips already. Just, you know, we're in and out of jobs. and But so far it's protected it. Although Vessel um, did a better job as far as the packaging goes for in and out of different job sites. All right guys, now we're gonna be talking about height and extension handles. As is, this is how tall the Festool stands compared to the Mirko with the extension handle that screws into the bottom. That club looking thing at the bottom, that's the extension handle for the Mirko. The Festool came with the middle section that can get taken off and you could also purchase a separate middle section to make two of these and make this that much longer. Although it's noteworthy that this extension runs about $350 as opposed to that that ran, uh, I think it was $100, but I got it packaged. So my Mirka cost me $1,200 US dollars Festool as is with everything shown in this video cost me 13 so a hundred dollars more And this is what you get Now we're going to talk about lighting so the main thing that appealed to me to purchase this plane X is this feature right here and I gotta tell you it is amazing this light is almost a little bit too good. I'll show you some clips of a house we sanded with some crazy patches so you can see what I'm talking about.
but this light is super good it looks a lot brighter on camera well here there's a lot of natural sunlight because we're outside but if we were indoors this would just have a halo ring you wouldn't even be able to tell the detail like you are right now but it is not it's perfect it's uh the perfect inspection light and they did a really good job on that and it pretty much goes all the way around there's no visible shadowing the only spot is right there where the leds join but you can't even tell when you're sanding so they did a great job on that the other one has no light but if you've seen some of our previous videos i've been playing a lot around with different lighting options so what i came up with at the end was i put a metal plate this is an old blade for a second coat nail spotter that was just in my shed so all i did was turn it upside down glue it onto this plastic i didn't screw anything i glued it and we could uh do this now so all i got was a magnetic light from costco this pivots so it's perfect and i could take it off let me turn this on so you can see what i'm talking about so i can put it there and it shows there's some shadowing but when you're sanding you could tell you could see what you're sanding and then at the end of the room if you want to double check you just take this off and check so uh this was my final version of what works best for us as far as sanding but yeah this works out great uh the battery life on this is about two hours but that works out great and that's a solution for something that you know this would have been obviously better for for it to be over here because you could see everything but this is better than nothing and it doesn't make it heavy this is fairly light so it works hey guys so next up is weight uh i'm not gonna go ahead and weigh it like i did in previous videos but i can tell you right now the miracle is a lot more uh it just feels lighter it may not be like a huge difference but it just feels lighter and it also feels way better balanced what i mean by that is if i hold it if i hold it in the middle it kind of balances itself out so it just it just feels a lot nicer to use all day less strain on your body and uh especially if you're sanding ceilings this 180 head movement is going to make the world of a difference because you could stand literally overhead and keep keep the weight of the machine right centered to your body you don't have to go this way how you're gonna have to with the with the pistol and now the weight is transferred onto my shoulders here it's a lot easier a lot more sustainable throughout the day to sand so all you do is just hold it here and just go with it but yeah Mirka is is uh, better in that sense the pistol The vessel feels beefy, feels strong, but this is a little bit too wide for my comfort. And I don't like how top heavy it feels. So you see what I mean? Where most of the weight is up here. And unfortunately, since most of the weight is up here, you're carrying most of the weight overhead. And for this one, especially since the head is not 180, you could only go this much. It's a huge improvement to the, original but you could only go this much that being said when you're sanding high ceilings overhead you're going to find yourself overreaching and just putting way too much stress on your shoulders i could get another extension which is going to make it that much heavier and i just don't see myself wanting to sand in this position for too long if i'm being honest this is just way too too difficult especially on high ceilings but I'm going to go ahead and try it so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can 
can see it is a bit more strenuous. I feel it a lot more than with the Mirka. And um, another thing that I want to put out there is you go on Instagram and all these videos of the thing just holding itself up. That really has a lot to do with the vacuum. So I'm using both on my old Dewalt vacuum that has, I think, 140 um, CFM. So uh, for whatever reason, um, it won't hold the vacuum up. So you are bearing the full weight of this sander, both of them. So uh, example is I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it off just to have the vacuum running without, without it oscillating. So I don't burn the paper to show you that it's not gonna stick to itself with the Dewalt back. Maybe with the Festool it'll work a lot better and there'll be way better suction, but I'm gonna dial it all the way up. It has the suction control on here. It's full blast on the, on the vacuum itself. So I'm gonna turn it off and on just to keep the vacuum running, not the head moving. Yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna stay up there, guys. So, you're carrying this bad boy. Along with that one, there's no one-handed sanding here. Not with this vacuum. Maybe with the other ones, you'll just kind of suck itself in. But uh, yeah, if you're thinking of using an older vac that you already have, since you don't want to purchase a new vac every time, just to match, uh, that's something to consider. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about walls. There's no walls on this job, except for this little storage closet, all the ceilings. So I'm just gonna show you here how it works. As far as the head movement goes, since this is 180, it's just a lot easier. All you gotta do is up and down as you sand. So it feels just way more natural. Uh, I think if you're new to electric sanders in general, it's gonna feel more like what you're used to with the pole sander. Because when we sand, it's always up and down. So you get that movement, you get that muscle memory that helps you out. As opposed to the Festool that has limited movement, uh, along with pretty much not just the Festool, all the other electric sanders don't have this 180. So you're gonna have to sand, you're gonna have to readjust your muscle memory and get used to this motion. Puts a little bit more stress on your wrist if you ask me. Uh, so you're, you're gripping it a little bit harder. This is a lot easier. All you do is you let it drop, then you just bring it back. So for the walls, uh, Festool is good, but Mirka is just that little bit more comfortable in my opinion. One thing to keep in mind, if you're using an electric sander for the first time, any electric sander in that case is you're gonna to wanna to start flat, and you're gonna to have to uh, pretty much figure out what works best for you as far as grit and suction power. Because if you have it, uh, especially on the Festool, it has uh, a lot of suction power. If you have it on full suction and a fairly aggressive grit, it comes with the 180. So if you're using it with the 180 full suction, it's gonna to grip to the wall and if you're using it for the first time, you're going to eat away at your paper, you're going to eat away at your finish, and you're going to instantly regret buying it. But like I said, it takes some practice. Like any other drywall tool, you can't just be super awesome at running the gun first time around. Same goes for all the sanders. So you want to start flat, and then you turn it on. If you don't do that, if you turn it on, and you go in at an angle, even if it touches it a little. Come closer, Carlos. You instantly burn. You just create a groove. You dive into your... Uh, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but here too, when I went in at an angle, I just pretty much gouged all the finish. It's a visible gouge. Let me get a little closer. So this right here, you could feel it. I could feel it right away with my finger, even through the glove. I gouged it. So yeah, you want to be, there's the other gouge. 
you want to be nice and flat and with this one since the movement is this way you want to keep the head moving in this direction you don't want to go side to side too much because you're going to cause it to uh, uh, not operate on the the axis that it has here the hinges and it's going to want to shake a little more because it's a random orbital but yeah that's just something to keep in mind with all electric sanders it's not going to be a perfect finish right away you got to kind of dial it in and see what works best for you So one thing I forgot to add as far as the height or the length that you could make these is since this is detachable, again this one you could buy for 350 and add as many of these as you want hypothetically. These are kind of beefy, kind of heavy. Um, so I kind of see where they're getting that 350 from but at the same time it's like bruh 350 for one of these. I could totally see myself losing track of one of these <laughs> if I had more than one. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. But an awesome feature is this is how small it can get. So this is a perfect height for tight areas. And I think Mirka released something similar to this in size with like a little handle over here. Uh, at first I thought it was a joke, but... <laughs> In Europe they released a mini version so something around this size for the same I think the same price point um, but it's identical to this just smaller and it has a little handle so I don't know that that's kind of that doesn't make sense to me unless it had a light then I would totally be doing another video with a little mini version of this bad boy over here <laughs> but yeah that's something to keep in mind yeah, so here the Mirka fits perfectly, but just the Mirka. Uh, and here you could add some more goodies, like the light that I use for the Mirka and the Abernet that I use for the Mirka, along with random space there. And it still shuts nice and tight, and you're good to go. So that's a plus. Hey, what's up, guys? Just stuck. Some crazy stop in middle traffic. So, in conclusion, the Festool was actually pretty good. I really enjoyed the inspection light. It was a lot better than I expected. You can see all your sins. <laughs> it makes you second guess how good you need to leave it for texture. Uh, what happened in, the, in that house, in that clip that I showed was uh, the tie-in of the new addition to the existing was uh, CMU block so you could see how inconsistent that was and uh, I ended up just as soon as we put a light to it I ended up just re-skimming that whole thing so uh, we still got to go back to finish spraying that house but yeah the light is really good uh, the suction I feel is a lot better in the festival than the Merca uh, yeah so there is I mean, both are really good at dust management, so uh, that's not really a concern. Uh, suction, though, on the Festool, you can feel a visible difference. It grips to the wall a lot more. So uh, if that's something you're looking for, then uh, Festool does a better job at it. But um, overall, the head movement, I got to give it to Mirka, that 180 hands down beats all their competition just makes it way easier to sand ceilings you know uh, even walls are, are easier just all around a little bit easier a little bit more uh, I want to say easier on your body when you're using it to sand especially if um, in my case when we do work together everyone's at the same house I end up running the the electric sander while the guy's hand sand behind me so one guy can do the work of pretty much three or four with the electric sander and that frees up everybody else hand sand so in turn you finish a lot faster but uh, like anything it takes some time to get used to uh, you can't go from pole sanding to electric sanding and expect the same results right away um, and you know, maybe it's not for everybody, the electric sanding. I, I've had uh, comments, people reached out to me, 
that have bought the Merca and that uh, just think it burns, uh, it's too aggressive, which is, um, which is like, it's the, the Merca, in my opinion, is the most uh, delicate sander in the sense of it, it, you can get that true level five finish. It's really, um, once you dial it in, it does a super good job at not uh, scuffing up the finish or taking off that level five, uh, you know, all that hard work that you did to get it nice and smooth and then it doesn't scratch it off. Um, I see the Festool, uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to dial it in uh, just cause the suction is so good. Uh, so I just gotta play around with it more. But overall, is it worth the investment? Uh, if you already have the Merca and you're mainly doing smooth finish, you're not worried about uh, popcorn removal or any uh, stuff like that, then nah, you don't need it. it it's not necessary. Uh, just add a light to your Merca and you're, you're golden. But if you have the Merca and you do level five smooth finish, but you also want something that uh, can handle the popcorn removal and handle uh, the more aggressive stuff and be able to do smooth finish, then the Festool is a great addition, which is what we're gonna be using it for. I see myself using the Festool now way more for my texture jobs, um, especially since majority of them are track, uh, you know, like uh, cookie cutter homes where it's just eight foot ceilings. So that when I just gotta, just gotta make it that shorty, you know, don't put that extension in the middle and it's perfect. I see. I see myself using it all the time, especially since it has that light. It's just that it just makes it that much easier for all my high work, where there's high ceilings, uh, smooth finish, level five. We're gonna bring out the Merca. So it has its place. Uh, and again, this is just my opinion. But uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope I didn't ramble too much. But um, yeah. Um, Aloha. Have a good one.